Insane facts about your eyes you never knew. Blue eyes are the result of a genetic mutation that occurred in Europe 10,000 years ago. The rarest eye colour in the world is green, only 2% of people have them. Your eyes can detect over 10 million different colours. You'll blink over 630 million times in your life. After all that blinking, no wonder why our eyes feel tired and irritated sometimes. That's why I've been using Fairy Tears eye drops to keep my eyes hydrated after spending hours on my phone. The screen eye drops provide instant relief from dry eyes during the day caused by staring at screens for too long. And before bed, I use Fairy Tears overnight eye drops to wake up with hydrated eyes that don't feel bad in the morning. Go to the link in my bio and give your eyes the break they deserve with Fairy Tears eye drops. Here are some kids who won Halloween. This little boy went as his grandpa and that has to be the cutest thing I've ever seen. But it goes hand in hand with this little girl who went as her grandma. And this kid nailed his Russell costume from Up. This little girl and her dog totally won Halloween. Beauty and her beast. And this kid went as the Stanley Cup. And here we have a little Beetlejuice. This kid went as a jet and honestly this costume is pretty cool. This little guy went as a toy soldier. And this kid as the gingerbread man is so iconic. And here we have the squid games girl and this baby as oscar the grouch has made my entire day this is why you should always lock your doors as soon as you get home by 30 there's a guy outside <laughs> the police was called and the man was left alone after his family explains he just has mental problems this man tried opening the door can you imagine what would have happened if that door was unlocked how rare is your body only five percent of people in the world can lick their elbow Red hair is the rarest hair color in the world and only about 2% of people have it. Next is the double row of eyelashes. Only about 1% of people have this and it actually causes them to cry more. Only 5% of people have this extra hole near their ear and it's actually proof that humans once had gills. And if you have two different colored eyes, you are super rare because only 0.1% of people have this. The craziest torture methods ever, part 29, the bastinado, dating back to 1537 in Europe and 960 in China. Literally the act of beating the shit out of somebody's feet, typically performed with canes or sticks. They made sure to avoid the bone structure of the ball and heel. They went straight for that soft tenderloin meat right in the middle. Fuck that. A warning is now being issued for the rise of the XL bully cats, and people are being urged not to buy them. The mutant breed is being created by breeders in the US by mixing the gene that causes hairlessness in sphinx cats with the gene that is responsible for short legs in munchkin cats. And now they are spreading to the UK after being bred to resemble the XL bully dog, which as we all know was banned in the country last year. The reason animal experts are urging people not to buy them is because they suffer from a number of serious health issues. Their short legs make it harder for them to jump, put them at a disadvantage if attacked and can lead to painful arthritis. They have no whiskers, which can cause problems with communication and navigation. Their lack of fur gives them limited ability to regulate their body temperature and can even get burnt when out in the sun. And experts even say that this breed is likely to have a life expectancy at least six years shorter than the average cat. They're urging all cat owners to put health over aesthetics and not to drive this experimental breed. These three kids are pure evil. In 1966, in the southwestern town of Greenwich, Connecticut, there were three ill-tempered kids, Damien, Caleb, and Axel. The townspeople called them the Little Satans. From the age of five, the Little Satans began to show a cruel side, frequently capturing small animals in the town's woods. The other kids in town were terrified and kept their distance. However, the parents of these three believed it was just harmless childhood mischief. Most townspeople chose to stay silent, fearing retaliation from these wealthy and influential families. But the little Satan's behavior became increasingly brazen. One day, a few children from town went missing, and the last time anyone saw them, they were with the little Satans. Yet, due to a lack of direct evidence, the local police were unable to launch a deeper investigation. One officer, Marcus Hayes, refused to give up. He kept investigating quietly, watching the three families day after day. Then, one night, all the little Satan's parents gathered together, and Marcus sensed that something was wrong. He immediately called for backup, 
and they eventually discovered a hidden basement. Inside, they found the missing children from town. As Marcus dug deeper into the case, he uncovered something even more terrifying. Do you want to know what Marcus found? Comment Little Satans to watch part two. Scariest urban legend from each state, part one. Slaughter Canyon in Arizona. A family lived down in the canyon in the 1800s. The husband would always go into the mountains and try and find food for his family. One day, the husband never came back. The family was starving. The wife went crazy and killed her children. To this day, you can still hear the wife crying for forgiveness around the area. Fun fact, while many people have a fear of flying, they should have a fear of driving. Statistically, if you lived through the drive to the airport, you've already survived the most dangerous part of your journey for the day until you get back into a car when you arrive at your destination. The chances of getting into a deadly plane crash on a large commercial airplane are around 1 in 13 million, but your chances of getting into a deadly car crash are around 1 in 100. Crazy food facts you didn't know. Studies show dark chocolate can actually make you smarter. Bananas are classified as berries, but strawberries are not. Honey never expires. They found pots of honey in old ancient Egyptian tombs that are still edible. Carrots weren't originally orange, they were originally purple. If you have no time for breakfast and join the goal, Fuel 10K is the best food hack. I'm obsessed with their strawberry breakfast drink. It's tasty and a quick boost of energy. And if I get hungry when I'm working, their oat squares are the perfect snack to make me feel full. Here are moments of regret that were caught on camera. This one guy thought it would be funny to fool around at his local water park by hiding in one of the slides until the park closed. However, he forgot the fact that when the park closes, someone comes by to lock up the exit to the slide. And this happened exactly where he was hiding and he was locked up and his imprisonment was caught on camera. Next, during a heavy flood in his local city, a man tried taking a risk and drove straight into a giant body of water. Not only did this damage his car, but also his dignity, because people nearby were recording and roasting him. Next, this Canadian TikToker was trying to make her cousin laugh, and she succeeded, but it ended with her having a harmonica stuck in her jaw. In the video, which she chose to upload, you can see her panicking and breathing through the instrument, sounding like Thomas the Tank Engine. And finally, this lady saw a punching bag at her local arcade and tried to take a swing at it, only for her aim to be so off that she ended up hitting herself. She then saw that she was being recorded by her friend, flipped him off, and then immediately slipped and fell. I think at this point you have to move countries. Three ways to survive Jeff the Killer. Number one, if you see a boy holding a knife at the edge of the woods, don't go near him and run the opposite way. Jeff is extremely strong and fast. Once you get too close, it's already too late. Number two, don't ever go looking for Jeff. Look Looking for him is an extremely bad idea, being so that he's extremely sick and twisted, and he'll probably do things that you wouldn't like being done to you, so looking for him shouldn't be on your list. Number 3. Don't ever make waffles past midnight, being so that Jeff is extremely obsessed with them. He loves waffles, and once he gets that scent, he'll walk towards them, ending up in your kitchen with a knife. Like and follow for more videos. Scroll now or lose your innocence. So fun fact, Deer actually liked the taste of meat, but don't have the hardware to do anything about it. At least not to anything that's still alive. Yeah, I'd be shocked too. So you're looking at a deer taste testing a cat. Nah, I'm just playing. It's salt. We take it for granted because we could put salt on anything, but wild animals, they gotta get it out the mud. No, like literally, they get creative, and sometimes creative means a mouthful of soil. Sometimes elephants will go into caves just to lick salt off the walls. Yeah, you heard me. Elephants be splunking. And if you're a moose, you might just lick the salt off a car. Probably not great for insurance, car, health, life. A salt feeding branch tank will wreck all three. And it might not be a cunning linguist, but best believe a deer will lick a cat clean. Butterflies taste with their feet, and they're attracted to the salt in our sweat. So a butterfly landing on you is taste testing your salt seasoned skin, and that is no joke. They'll also go out of their way to irritate the eyes of other animals to force them to cry just so they can drink the tears. Yeah, it ain't sweet. Salt can kill you in more ways than high blood pressure. Amazon animals often use clay licks called gulpas to add a little salt into their lives, which can get cut brutally short since jaguars will stalk clay licks knowing someone's gonna get got eventually. And deer using salt licks can spread chronic wasting disease. And if you don't know, CWD is death with busy work. And then you got that time mountain goats got addicted to the salt in human urine. And when I say addicted, they had to give them the Aravag. Those goats were craving that mineral at all costs. Moral of the story. 
story. I don't think there is one. I don't even remember how we got here. So, something about cats? This is the hotel room Liam was staying in when he fell from his balcony in a hotel in Buenos Aires. A hotel worker actually called police to tell them that someone was breaking everything in their room and that they were drunk and on drugs. When I tell you they said that the room was completely trashed, this is an example of what the room was filled with. This is one of the last photos they have of Liam before everything happened and he smashed his laptop in the hotel lobby. Now, one thing that I wanted to mention is that people are really pissed off right now because TMZ actually posted Liam's lifeless body on their social media and their website. Liam posted this Snapchat right before his death with his girlfriend, which people were a little confused because she's in this video, but in her TikTok video, she posts that she went back to Miami a day before he posted this. So people were just confused like was she there or was she not but this was probably just an old video that he posted on that day this is the tiktok video i'm talking about kate posted this three days ago and liam passed away yesterday so people were kind of confused how he posted a video on his snapchat with her yesterday if she wasn't there a new statement revealed that during his fall from the third floor balcony his skull cracked which actually caused his death and they're also saying that his fall was no accident but that he intended to jump off. Liam has been pretty open about his struggles with addiction as well as depression, which people are speculating that this may have been a contributor as to why this happened. Times when companies dissed others, part five. In 2009, Domino's ran an advertisement saying that in a blind test, their sandwiches beat Subway's 2 to 1. Well, Subway then solved this and sent a letter to Domino's demanding that they pull their ads from air. Well, Domino's replied with this commercial. Domino's oven baked sandwiches beat the taste of Subway's 2 to 1. Then Subway's lawyer sent us this letter demanding we pull our commercials off the air. I was going to burn the letter. But everything's better when it's oven baked. Next, in 2016, a Burger King in New York covered its entire building with white sheets and dressed up as the ghost of McDonald's, saying that McDonald's was the scariest Halloween costume they could wear. And they also recorded this ad where everybody was just screaming at the building. McDonald's response was, who wouldn't want to pretend to be us? Weirdest kids toys ever, part 16. Now this product isn't actually a toy, but it was designed for kids. Wonder Woman safety scissors. These are 100% real and from the late 70s. What were they thinking? I mean, just look at that spread. Who is the weakest horror movie character on this list? You have Leatherface, Michael Myers, Pennywise, Freddy Krueger, Pinhead, and Jason. Now, as we can all agree, Jason's getting knocked off the list already because he's the strongest, as we all know. We're now left with Leatherface, Michael Myers, Pennywise, Freddy Krueger, and Pinhead. Leatherface is pretty strong, don't get me wrong, but if he went one-on-one -on -one with any of these characters besides Pennywise, I think he's getting clapped. I think him versus Pennywise would be an actually pretty good fight. Yes, Pennywise is a demon and Leatherface is a cannibalistic human that runs around with a chainsaw, but still, I think it would be a good fight. Then on the other hand, if you have Pennywise fight any of these other characters, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Pinhead, and Jason, Pennywise is getting packed up. So I feel like it's only fair that Michael Myers gets off the list. Michael Myers is packing up all of these characters besides Jason, making him the second strongest. And then for shits and giggles, I'm taking Pinhead off as well. Because Pinhead is extremely powerful. As soon as you open that cube, you're wraps. Those chains come out of nowhere, it is chalked for you. Then I'm taking off Freddy Krueger. Because let's be honest, Leatherface versus Freddy Krueger? Leatherface is getting packed up. Freddy Krueger versus Pennywise? Pennywise getting backed up. So now the two weakest, in my opinion, is Leatherface and Pennywise. And if those two fought it out, I really and truly think Leatherface is winning. No holds Hard. Pennywise is a fraud. Ain't that scary and ain't that strong. Don't forget to like and follow for more and comment down below what you think. soldier lost his life for dating a transgender woman. On July 6, 1999, a group of soldiers who were stationed at Fort Campbell Army Base in Kentucky drove to downtown Nashville to go to a transgender club slash bar called The Connection. One of the soldiers, 21-year-old Barry Winchell, met a transgender dancer, Calpurnia Adams, at the club. 
The two hit it off, exchanged numbers, and started dating. One of the soldiers, Justin Fisher, started gossiping with other soldiers that Barry was dating a transgender woman. With this information, the soldiers were taunting, teasing, and calling Barry derogatory and vulgar names. Barry reported this to his superiors, but they basically just brushed it off. By the 4th of July weekend, Barry was just getting fed up with everything. Barry and another soldier named Calvin Glover end up getting into a physical altercation. Barry ends up winning that altercation and the other soldiers are now making fun of Calvin for losing the fight and he knew that he had something to prove to those soldiers. Calvin went to Justin's locker and retrieved a baseball bat and while Barry was asleep, he struck him in the head and neck multiple times. Barry was transported to Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee, where he died from massive head injuries. Calvin was arrested and accepted a plea deal for murder. Calvin claimed that he didn't mean to unalive Barry, that he must have just been too drunk. Justin was also arrested and sentenced to 12 and a half years in prison. As for Calvin, he was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. Justin was released on October of 2006 and Calvin was released on parole on August 27th of 2020. Once again, when you talk about Aura, you better speak on this bear. This is the boss. That's his name, no relation. He's a 700 pound walking boulder of a bear and an anime plot device in a grizzly's body. The boss has been recorded catching, murking, and eating multiple black bears. In fact, one of the first times he was ever seen was next to an expired bear and officials had to close down the trail until the boss was done eating it. At one point, the boss hit a train and was tragically put down. The train, I mean. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said the bear hit the train. Boss ate that like it was nothing. He even shows up to the same tracks just to eat the animals that weren't strong enough to survive what he walked off. As mentioned, Boss was roughly the size of two prime shacks. That's a whole plus size predator. He was and is the biggest bear in the area, and it's believed he fathered more than 70% of all the bears in the area code. Mind you, he's believed to be up to 27 years old. Hey, twins, when the average male grizzly bear lives to 25. Which means father time getting jumped. This bear on a LeBron type of run. And you know a bear that survived a literal train barely second guesses cars, and the boss regularly crossed his high-speed highways. It's anime plot armor with predatory hardware. The boss even has his own antagonist. That would be this guy, Split Lip. They've been running fades for years and they've been in the same area for 15, so this beef may have marinated for over a decade. But I don't think Boss has taken an L yet. Boss from BAMP better put some respect on the OG. Original Grizzly. Let's talk about a disturbing free horror game where the main character is not what he seems. Hypocrite. Fair warning, we are going to spoil the story here, or at least what I think the story is. If you'd rather check the game out yourself, I have a full playthrough of it on my channel. We play as a social media influencer named August. And his whole thing is that he helps kids when they're being harassed on the internet or in real life. A guy named Leon requests that you help him find his daughter who's been kidnapped. And while solving kidnappings isn't really your thing, you decide to accept. And then, the story takes a turn. We watch as our character opens up a secret passageway behind a bookshelf. What could he possibly be doing? When he's down there in that secret tunnel, we learn what he really is. Our character, August, is a monster. He does not actually help people. And Leon's daughter has actually been kidnapped in his basement this entire time. But when Leon finds out something is up, it's too late and August takes them both out. This Russian engineer has just spent the last six years in his garage creating a real life Iron Man suit. And this is not some little fun gimmick. Bro has literally invented certain elements specifically for this suit, like hydrogen artificial muscles. You see those wires? They are connected to his muscles, so when he flexes, the suit moves with him. And it only gets crazier because he created a real plasma repulsor that creates such a quick hydrogen explosion that it can't even be captured on his camera. And just like the entire Iron Man suit is powered by Tony Stark's chest piece, RIP to a real one, so is this suit. He created the world's first fully functional personal hydrogen reactor that powers those those plasma shots, the artificial muscles, and even this. Real hand burners that can reach temperatures of over 3,000 degrees Celsius. He made it by creating an electrolyzer that splits water into hydrogen and oxygen, which are then combined and ignited to produce the torch's flame. And the hardest part about this is creating a really powerful continuous torch, while also preventing it from blowing out, overheating, and just burning his hand off. So he casually solved this by designing a system with multiple nozzles and then added an inbuilt cooling system. Bro is literally Tony Stark at this point. Now he's currently working on the outer layer of this suit, which has taken him several months just to create the head and torso. Because he didn't just pick up the first material and get cracking. He has designed every element of this suit to fit his body perfectly, which is 
painstaking. He went from pencil sketches to creating an entire clay model. He then used high resolution 3D scanning to create a precise digital copy. He 3D printed those parts separately, strength tested countless materials, and then reinforced those pieces with Kevlar and carbon fiber. He even wrote and played the music he uses in the background of his videos. Oh, and he also holds the Guinness World Record for the world's first retractable lightsaber. And after six years, He's getting close. So the question is, which will be complete first? GTA 6 or a real life Iron Man suit? Fun fact, multiple people have been reporting that their robot vacuum cleaners are getting hacked, allowing hackers to gain full access to the machine's microphone, camera, and motion controls. One family's vacuum cleaner was hacked, and the hacker began shouting racist slurs through the microphone as they drove it around the house. All the hacked robot vacuum cleaners were Ecovacs DBot X2s, which ABC News Australia had already exposed to have massive security flaws. In another home, a hacked vacuum cleaner chased the family dog around the house while shouting at it through the microphone. But at least these people knew they'd been hacked. It's much scarier for those who didn't. As you can see from the ABC Australia News report, the Ecovax DBot X2 has a very good camera, and you can clearly see a person's face or body. This will be the last photo taken of her before she was pushed off of that cliff. This is Jolene Nicole Callan, and she was born on December 29th of 1996. In 2014, Jolie was a senior at Vincent High School, and this is where she would meet Lauren Daniel Bunner, and this is a guy who would become her boyfriend, and they would date for about 10 months. Those who were close with Jolie noticed that there were tons of red flags in the relationship. Lauren was possessive and insecure, and it seemed like he only wanted Jolie to invest her time and energy into him and nobody else. As the relationship progressed, Lauren became more manipulative and controlling, and anytime Jolie tried to leave the relationship, he would do something dramatic to make her stay. For example, Lauren threatened to take his own life and this scared Jolie, so she decided to give the relationship another chance. In 2015, Jolie graduated from high school and this time she decided she was going to break off things for good. Despite Lauren's threats, cries, and pleas, Jolie stood her ground and she was done this time. Lauren wasn't one to accept the breakup easily though and it took him weeks until he could finally accept that they were never going to be together. Once it seemed that Lauren had finally accepted the breakup, he requested from Jolie that the two remain friends, and she happily agreed to that. On August 30th of 2015, Lauren asked Jolie if she wanted to go on a hike with him, and she agreed. The two had been broken up for about two months now, and Jolie texted a friend that she was going on a hiking trip, and it was going to be a symbolic friendship hike. During the outing, Lauren took a series of photos of Jolie and put it onto his Instagram page. The first photo taken of Jolie was her in the passenger side with their dog on her lap and it was captioned on our way to go hiking. The final two photos of Jolie would be her on top of the mountain overlooking the view. As Jolie was admiring this view, Lauren took out a gun and shot her twice in the head. He then threw her off this 50 foot cliff and just seconds before Jolie was admiring this view not knowing what her fate was going to be. After leaving the state park, Lauren called 911 and gave a full confession. Jolie had been shot in the back of the head and between the eyes. Lauren was waiting on the side of the road for police to arrive. He was covered in Jolie's blood and he was quickly arrested and charged with her murder. Just a couple of weeks later, Lauren posted bond and was released from jail. Trial began in November of 2015 and Lauren pled not guilty. Lauren's lawyers argued that he was autistic and since he was not 21 years of age yet, he did not have to serve more than three years in prison despite the seriousness of the crime. Jolie's family got someone in the local press to petition for Lauren's status and in December of that year, the status was revoked and the case was back in court. On July 13th of 2017, Lauren pled guilty and he was sentenced to 52 years in prison and was tried as an adult. Lauren will also be eligible for parole in 15 years. Oh, <laughs>